Okay, right, hello, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be carrying on with even more blueprints. Uh, we're going to be looking at some different data types uh, and ways we can use um, some of the different data management tools uh, inside of Unreal to make our blueprints kind of a bit easier to work with uh, and a bit more kind of powerful. So, first thing I want to have a look up is a thing, or have a look at, I should say, uh, is a thing called enumerators. Uh, so in blueprints, you have here a thing called enumeration, it says in the tooltip here, an enumeration is a list of named values. Well, if we just create one, and I call it enum, and I call it enum weapon, and we're going to create an example um, based on what kind of weapon our character might have selected. Um, so if we open this up, uh, we have um, the editor, uh, and we can add new inputs to our enumeration. So this is just a list, and it's a list in order. So if I say pistol, that would be the first weapon. I could do a second one, uh, machine gun. And let's say we have a third weapon, and that is a rocket launcher. Obviously, it doesn't matter what these names are. Uh, it depends what's in your game. Um, but what this is going to allow us to do, give it a description as well, weapons, that'll do. Um, what's going to allow us to do is now create a blueprint uh, using this enumeration uh, as a um, as a variable, and we're able to just select from the drop down um, which of the three weapons we've created. So I'm just going to create create a quick test blueprint, BP data tests, and uh, just to show this off. So we're not going to be doing any sort of full worked examples today; just a few little um, kind of approaches and demonstrations of how we do things. So so we have our enumeration weapon. Uh, and here are entries, and we can obviously add as many as we like. Uh, and then if I open up this blueprint, what I'm going to do uh, in here, in my variables, I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call this uh, weapon. And if I go to my variable type, uh, click on the drop down. Um, if I type in enum for enumeration, uh, that's the name I gave it my uh, my enumerator. I can call it weapon. Anything I like to try and find uh, the one I just created. Like it's spell weapon, um, and then make it instance editable. If I just quickly compile that uh, blueprint and have a look with our test blueprint selected, here we can see weapon, and we've got this nice drop down list. Uh, so rather than sort of remembering, okay, pistol is slot zero and machine gun slot one, um, trying to do it all with integers, uh, you can actually just create an enumerator uh, and fill your list uh, as so. Um, now we've got that as a sort of set of data in our variable here. Um, what we can do is we can use a switch case. So if I bring in a reference to that uh, to enumerator, I can do a switch on enum. And now when I quit the game, yeah, begin play. Depending on what's selected here, it's going to run this bit of code, this bit of code, or this bit of code. So switch case is really cool. Uh, we can do switches on int and switch based on numbers. Um, and that would all work as well. Uh, you can switch on string, I believe. Switch on string, so you could use it with words. Uh, and this would all be fine. Um, but what's quite nice here is we're just telling the engine, here's my list, here's all the things we can do, and here's all the results. Uh, but it's all done with words uh, rather than just numbers. So it's really easy to read as code. And it means that if later on your weapon 4 decides to get cut from the game, you're not then having to either reschedule or remove all the numbers around. You can just be like, OK, fine. The sword has been cut, fine, uh, and then everything just still works because it's all based on on this list. Cool. So that's enumerators. Uh, I'm just going to create, um, well, let's have a look at the next one that we want to have a look at today, and that is going to be a structure. So structures we've already encountered, we've already used. Uh, I'm going to call this struct, uh, and actually I'm going to call this questions. So a while back, someone emailed and asked about how to set up data for a kind of quiz game. And that's what we're going to kind of have a look at here, um, at least one way you might want to do that. So uh, we're going to use struct. What is a struct? Well, if I go back into my test blueprint here, um, when we looked at line traces in a previous video, uh, we got this out hit result. And if we mouse over it, you see it's called an out hit, hit result structure. And if I break that, um, all a structure is, is it's one item of data that contains lots of other bits of data. So this hit structure contains Boolean values, float values, vectors, actor names, strings, all sorts of information, all to do with that hit. So it's just a way of data management. 
Um, if you tried to pass all of that data on at once, it wouldn't really work, far too much data, but we package it all up into a, a thing called a hit result first. Um, it's then really easy to sort of move that data around. Uh, and we've been using them all the time, or you've been using them all the time. If you have a look at the transform, so if I do get world transform, so anytime we're looking at a transform, we know that that's location, rotation, and scale. Well, it's actually just a special case structure. Um, it's got location, rota location, rotation, and scale within it. Uh, it doesn't come up as a structure, um, but that's all it is. It's just a way of containing multiple pieces of data in one larger piece of data. And we can create our own. We can create our own structures. So that's what we'll do now. So um, yeah, let's go straight in. Um, firstly, it comes with a uh, an example, so we want a string, and I'm going to call this one question. Obviously, with a questions and answer kind of quiz game, um, you're going to have a question and then a number of answers, and these are all just going to be written out as strings. Uh, string being a line of text. Um, answer A, answer B, answer C, and then finally answer D. Now, I could say correct answer and then put that down as maybe as an integer uh, and just do 0 as A and do that. But we could also just use an enumerator. So uh, we've just learned about those. Well, let's create another one. Um, if I go in here, blueprints, enumeration, enum, and I'm just going to call it A, B, C, D. And I'm going to have four entries, which are going to be A, B, C and D, and there we are. Um, we can move these up and down. The the order doesn't really matter, I don't believe. But obviously, you might want to have them in the right order for um, for your own sakes. And now here, our correct answer, rather than being an integer, is going to be that enum A B C D. And if you have a look down in the defaults here, we can set these to be. So if I set the default question to be who, I can have me, you, them or us as four potential answers and I'll say the correct answer well that's actually B the correct answer is U and now I'm building up that data um, that I can then use in my game um, and it doesn't just have to be sort of user user facing data so one thing that might be really nice within here um, is a question or has been asked has been asked if you're making a quiz game it's unlikely you're going to want to repeat the same questions um, and so you can have an item of data here has been asked starts out as false and as your game progresses you can store that data set that to be true and there's nothing stopping you adding as much kind of data or as many variables as you like within this um, in this custom structure so now we have that how do we use it well if we go into our test blueprint if I create a new variable uh, and I'm going to call this question one I can go up here in my variable type uh, just type in struct and I can create struct questions and if I compile we get those defaults coming in so now I have a variable that is question one um, and I can break that and get the data inside it uh, however I like as well as just using it directly if I do question and I can do questions round one and let's say I can make that an array and so I can have an array an array of structs uh, why is that giving me a warning? It's fine, just compile, it goes away. Um, and so I can have multiple questions uh, here, all within my blueprint. So I've got four questions, currently all the same data. I'm not going to go in and type out loads of questions. Hopefully you can see, uh, you could populate that. Um, but another really powerful way of kind of having all of round one's questions here, uh, and you can then kind of load them in, different variables for round one. Um, all contained within one single variable uh, or one single yeah variable lastly or last thing for today um, this is quite a nice way of working but there is also um, quite a lot of data management happening here if you have to go in and edit all of these uh, values every time you want to do anything and change a question that kind of thing it's going to be quite time consuming uh, and so there is another type of uh, thing I'm going to show you today and that is a data table so a tooltip here says imported spreadsheet table. Uh, so you can work with these offline, um, Google Sheets, Excel, however you want to spreadsheet things. 
uh, and then import them or you can use them uh, in, in engine. Um, so it says here pick a row structure well the structures we've just made um, this structure questions this can be used to populate a data table uh, and if I use this one here structure questions and call this data I don't know let's call this one round two um, and you'll see the uh, the variables that we've added have now been added to our data table um, if we add a, a row it's going to bring in those defaults I might just give that a um, different name so question A and we can do again question B and this is a way of storing that data in a data table that then can be referred back to in our blueprint so here let's say um, think of another question so in question B let's say um, color red green blue and yellow Oop, can't spell yellow and the correct answer is D, yellow. Here we are. And so we've got two questions in here, and you can see how you could easily populate this as much as possible. And now if we want to refer back to this in our blueprint, uh, it works very similar to how you sort of handle data in an array. Um, there are just some nodes for data tables. So if I type in data table, uh, we can get data table row names. And if we do that and reference our data table there, that's going to get question A and question B as the two row names or as many as we have um, and it's going to return that as an array and then we can also do get data table row and so we could take the row names and do a for each loop and then for every row name we have in our array we're going to go through and use that row name to get the data from the table and now we've created a loop that's just going to kind of take all that information and just process it one at a time and now we could go in and let's say populate our questions round one uh, ready to be kind of processed and displayed up on screen however we're doing that with the UI etc um, so depending on what we're doing uh, this can be quite useful um, definitely worth looking at using enumerators to make it nice and easy to uh, explain to your kind of like colleagues what the blueprint is doing if you could have like three or four different light setups or within one blueprint you could have lamp broken lamp whatever uh, rather than just exposing that as a one zero one two uh, kind of choice you can give them uh, words um, or making our own structs as well so just kind of like managing our own data um, I created a um, sky system using a lot of these things and so all the information you might need for a sky you could contain within a single um, single variable um, some position color intensity all those things uh, and then you can store that possibly uh, as a data table either to be imported and used offline um, or edited kind of like outside of the engine or just as a better way of, of editing being able to go in and see the whole thing as a table and do it that way so cool hopefully that was helpful um, as always if you have any questions or comments or anything please do let me know uh, big thanks to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel um, and I will see you all next time